Hey, welcome back to another episode of Sound Advice. I'm Sound Guy Barry, and in this episode, I'm going to explain how you can squeeze every last watt out of your power amplifier by using just a little bit of an unusual wiring setup. Now, the question may be, is the juice worth the squeeze? And I don't know if that's really the case, because this will give you a few percent more power but we know that it takes a rather significant increase in power for there to be a significant audible difference in the output. In order to get twice as loud, you need to increase your power by 10 times. So it takes a pretty big step up in power in order to really make the system a lot more loud audibly. But if you want to get every last watt out of your power amplifier, here's the way you can do it. So let's talk about a situation that would be common in this case. Let's say that you're providing sound for a band and you have an amplifier that is driving your woofers and that's where most of the power is going to be. And so that's where most of the gains that you want to achieve are probably going to be located. And so let's take a look at a scenario like this. So let's say you have a power amplifier. It's got two channels and you have your subwoofer input signal coming out of your crossover. And we're gonna put this into a Y so we can drive both of those channels because the bass frequencies below about a hundred Hertz are relatively omnidirectional. So I want the same base signal going to all of my woofers. Then coming off of channel one, we go into a woofer. And channel two goes to his woofer. So we have both channels in the amplifier taking in the same signal and each side driving its set of woofers. Let's say that uh, these woofers are four ohms each. Great. Now, one of the things that people might say is, well, if you want more power, just bridge the amplifier. And you can get more power out of the amplifier by bridging it, certainly. However, there are some good reasons not to be bridging amplifiers, and I have other videos on that topic, so I'll give you my opinions in those videos as to why I'm not a big fan of bridging amplifiers. But in this case, we're driving 4 ohm loads, and if we were to put these guys together in bridge mode, that would give us 2 ohms. Well, 2 ohms is a pretty heavy load for a single channel. And two ohms is a really, really heavy load to run on a bridged amplifier. Now, I've got a couple of amplifiers that are absolute beasts that are over 70 pounds that probably could take a two ohm bridged load, but that's pretty severe. So I wouldn't do that. So I think bridging is probably not the answer in this case. So without bridging the amplifier, how can we get a little more power out of the system to those drivers? Well, let's take a look at how amplifiers work. And so knowing that, we can do a little wiring trick that'll squeeze a bit more juice out of this box. To understand how this works, we need to have a real basic understanding of how power amplifiers work. So let's start at the beginning. Let's imagine you have a kick drum and we're looking at the head of the kick drum. So, and so the head right now is stationary. It's just sitting here just like this not moving at all. And then the drummer comes up and he gives it a good solid kick 
Well, if we were to look at position versus time, we'll see that the head moves forward when he kicks it. And then the head is going to travel back to its resting position. And then once it hits the resting position, well, it's not going to stop just yet. So then the head moves inward into the drum shell a little bit. Like so. And after it moves inward, then it's going to come back forward. So it's going to do something like this, where there's a, a strong hit, and then the head is going to vibrate a little bit. If we were to put a microphone on that drum, we're going to get an electrical signal out of the microphone because the air pressure hits the diaphragm in the microphone, makes it move, that generates electricity, and we're going to get an electrical signal out of the microphone. that looks just like the motion of the drum head, right? Now, our goal is to take this weak electrical signal, make it bigger and stronger, better. And uh, that's the point of our amplifier. So we can increase that signal to a level where we can drive loudspeakers with it. So how do we do that? That signal is coming into your amplifier, like so, where this is time and this is voltage, and there's a zero point right here. So the voltage swings positive when we want the speaker to push outward, and it dips down negative when we want to pull that speaker back inward. And when it's at the zero point, the speaker's at its resting position. And so what we'll do is we will just send this signal into a valve. So this is a transistor. Let's think of it just as a water valve. And so this signal controls the handle on the water valve. And above this is a big reservoir of energy. Maybe it's water. Yeah, it's probably electricity. And so when the signal goes way up here, that cranks the valve wide open, and a lot of energy comes pouring down through the, the valve, and that goes out to our speaker, which then makes noise. Easy enough, huh? Uh, but there's a problem with this. The problem is that transistors only operate with current in one direction. So by doing this, we'd get all the, the peaks. We get all of the, the top side of it. But what about the bottom? That's a problem, isn't it? So we just do the same thing. We put another valve here, another transistor, right? We tie him in. And then on this side, we have another reservoir of energy to draw from. And we'll tie those guys together. So, and uh, let's call this our plus supply, and that's our minus supply. So now, when the signal goes positive, it draws down from the plus supply, and that goes out. When it goes negative, it goes through this valve, which again is a one-way valve, but going the other direction. So energy can come up and out through there, like so. And so now we can get both sides of our wave coming out to the uh, loudspeakers. Easy enough, huh? So this here and here are the power supplies in the amplifier that are providing all of the power that drive your outputs. Now, we could think of this in terms of water if you wanted to, and these guys could be 
small water towers in your town where there's a pump that fills that reservoir up. And maybe the pump isn't capable of supplying all the energy all the time that's always necessary. But by filling up a reservoir, it can handle those peak demands. The pump might only turn on every once in a while to refill this to the point that it's needed to provide the energy that the community needs. Now, imagine if your community had a big manufacturing plant that drew a lot of water and they were the only one who is consuming water at the moment. They'd have pretty good performance, right? They'd be the only person tapping into that tank at one time. So the water pressure would be great and they'd have no problem at all. But then what if a secondary manufacturer who also drew a whole ton of water came online at exactly the same time? Well, with both of those guys drawing heavy demand off of the supply, What's going to happen to the water pressure? It's probably going to go down just a little bit. Well, what's happening with your power amplifier? We've just drawn one channel. But now imagine your amplifier is stereo, and you're driving two channels with the identical signal, and they're both drawn off these supplies. Now, when the signal goes positive up here, we're going to be drawing off of the positive supply. At that point in time, what is happening with the negative supply? Nothing. Nobody's drawing anything off of him, but we've got two guys drawing off of the positive. So, how can we make better use of our power amplifier? Well, pretty simple. What we can do is provide an input into one side of the amplifier and then push the bridge switch on the amplifier. Now, what's that going to do? What that does is it takes the signal into one channel that is in normal mode, and then it connects that signal to the second channel, and it inverts it. So when this guy's going high, this guy's going low. So it swaps the polarity around between the two input channels. Now, you could also do this with a Y cable wired up appropriately if you swapped pins two and three of your XLR connector, which are the inverted and not inverted signals. If you swap them around, do the same thing. Or you can just put your signal into probably left channel of most amplifiers and hit the bridge switch which causes one channel to be in normal phase and the other one to swap the polarity around in inverted phase. So when one channel is going high, the other one's going low. And when the first channel goes low, the second one goes high. So it's the exact same signal, but they're just flipped upside down. So now we have one amplifier module that's drawn from the positive supply at any mo moment in time. And at that exact moment in time, the other channel will be drawn from the negative supply. So we don't have both channels pulling off the same supply at the same time. And we're able to get more efficient use out of the amplifier because we're evenly drawing off of both the top and bottom power supplies, not having both channels pulling against the same side at the same time. And so by doing that, Depends on the amplifier, depends on the power supplies, but you can get a few percent more power out of your amplifier and it doesn't cost you a thing. It just requires a little bit of a wiring change. Now, of course, if we were to do this and hook up our speakers normally, like so. One speaker would be going out while the other one's going in. Well, that wouldn't be good because they would be trying to cancel each other out acoustically, wouldn't they? So all we have to do in this case is uh, just swap one of those speaker leads around. So instead of driving the plus side of the speaker, we uh, 
or the minus. So on your output speaker terminals, you hook up one speaker like you normally do with the plus of the speaker going to the plus of the amplifier. And the other channel, you hook the minus side of the speaker to the plus side of the amplifier. Because we've swapped the phase around on the input, so we gotta swap it around again on the output in order to get things back in phase with the first channel. And so we flip around one side of the input and we flip around that speaker that's attached to that side and then everybody will be working in phase together, but we're using our amplifier most efficiently because we're drawing off of both the top side, the plus, and the bottom side minus power supplies evenly, rather than making both channels slurp off the same side of the supply at the same time. So here's a quick tip for you. You can impress your friends as to how you can squeeze just a little bit more juice out of your power amplifier if you're in those situations where you're really using this amplifier as a mono amplifier driving the same signal through both channels like you would in a typical subwoofer application. Again, I don't think you're going to get huge gains out of this, but you might get a few percent. You might get 10% possibly. So good luck with that. And uh, just a clever little tip to get the most out of your gear. Hey, one more quick tip before I go. There's a really easy way you can tell if your system is wired in phase and the woofers are both pushing out all at the same time. All you need to do is play some program material that has good bass response to it, or maybe better yet, play a low frequency test tone of maybe 50 or 60 hertz. And this doesn't have to be at huge level or anything. Then stand in the middle of the speakers and see if you get good, solid, smooth bass response. And then move side to side across the room and see if you have fairly even bass response through all of those positions as you're standing, oh, maybe 10 to 20 feet back from the loudspeakers. If you have smooth bass coverage and strong bass in the middle, chances are your system is probably in phase. If you hear weak bass in the middle, and as you move side to side, you hit hot and cold spots in bass, that's a clue that things may be out of phase. You can also stand in the middle, listen to the system, and then have somebody swap the polarity on one of your speaker columns, and you should pretty dramatically hear the bass either get much better, in which case that's now in phase, or much worse, which would indicate to you that one of the sides is out of phase. If you have the ability to listen to the system and swap the polarity back and forth as it's playing, you can probably quickly ascertain whether or not your system is wired properly in phase. Of course, if you're not in phase, you're going to have poor bass response and pour a lot of energy into the room that isn't going to be well utilized. So we want to make sure that all of our woofers are moving in the same direction at the same time. Hope you enjoy these episodes. And if you do, I would encourage you to subscribe so you don't miss new content. And if you would, if you like what you're seeing, I'd encourage you to hit the like button so that YouTube knows that this kind of video is appreciated by the audience. And maybe YouTube will suggest these videos to more folks. Thanks for watching. I hope to catch you again soon on another upcoming episode of Sound Advice.